What can you control? Hmm. A paintbrush, a video game, a basketball, a drone. Oh, a mixer. Yikes. All of these things can be a little tricky to control, but with practice, you can get really good. But you know what's the toughest thing to control? You. Some days, it feels like your thoughts, your words, and your actions are all running away with you. But with God's help, you can learn to control you. It starts with inviting God into your thoughts, planting His words in your heart, stopping to think before you speak, choosing to reflect before you act. Through the power of God's Spirit, you can speak and act in a way that shows love to others and to God. You can choose every day to live His way. That's why showing self-control is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Whenever I'm in need and I'm looking for help, God, you're always there for me. Wherever you lead me, I can follow you. God, you're always there for me. Oh, God, you're always there for me. Help me believe you know what's best for me. Feel it in my soul When you are in control I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way Oh yeah I do what I should do When you help me choose I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way Oh yeah I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way Oh yeah Lost and I don't know where to turn. God, you're always there for me. Wherever I go, you're always by my side. God, you're always there for me. Oh, God, you're always there for me. So help me believe you know what's best for me. to be more like you because your way is the best way i feel it in my soul when you are in control i got one life to live and i want to live it your way oh yeah i do what i should do when you help me choose i got one life to live and i want to live it your Whoa. way oh yeah excited about what's in this box. I found it online and I had to get it. It's kind of a throwback to another era. And as much as I just want to rip into this box without thinking and just throw it everywhere, it's probably best if I exercise a little bit of self-control. <sighs> self-control is choosing to do what you should even when you don't want to. So I'm choosing to do a nice, and slow 
control then box. Step one, very carefully cut the tape from the box. Step two, open the box. Slowly open the box and huh, what do we have here? Instruction manual. Very important. Not one remote control and the treasure of treasures. A VCR. Video set recorder. Let me just, uh, here. <laughs> now I can watch movies like our ancestors did. All I need is a video cassette. American Tale 2, Bible Goes West. Sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> All right, so now I just, I just, Pop that. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you know what? Where's the. Oh. <sighs> I think I broke it. I don't understand. I thought that I was. I thought I was prepared. <sighs> I don't know where I went wrong. Oh, I have got a remote control, I can just rewind. Oh, in today's story, we're going to rewind back to when Jesus spent 40 days in the desert. Don't worry, he was more prepared than I was. <sighs> See you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. After his remarkable birth, Jesus spent most of his years growing up in Nazareth. To others, he probably seemed like any other Jewish boy. He ran and played with the other kids. Catch! He worked in the carpentry shop with his father, Joseph. As he grew older, he studied God's word, the part of scripture we now know as the Old Testament. Worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. It was not until Jesus came to the Jordan River to be baptized by John that others began to realize how extraordinary he was. This is my son and I love him. I am very pleased with him. 30 years of life had led Jesus to this point, where God himself announced that Jesus was the chosen one. It must have seemed like the perfect time for Jesus to begin doing miracles and gathering new followers. But that's not what happened. Instead, God's spirit led Jesus into the desert for 40 long days. God, I trust you. I trust your plan. During this time, Jesus ate nothing at all. He focused on God as the one thing he needed above all else. But he wasn't alone, not quite, because the devil showed up. You must be hungry, so hungry. It was true. Jesus was desperately in need of food. You are human, after all. The devil refused to leave Jesus alone. He needled and tempted him at every opportunity. At the end of 40 days, he offered Jesus a smooth, heavy rock. If you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus stared at the round stone. He knew as God's son, he could easily turn it into a warm, crisp loaf of bread and just tear off just a large, chewy piece to instantly satisfy his hunger. But he knew every word God had spoken. It is written, Man must not live only on bread. S suit yourself. The devil wasn't finished. 
he led Jesus to a high place where the whole world appeared to spread out beneath them. Every powerful kingdom, every palace, every throne of all the rulers on earth. The devil smiled. He seemed reasonable in control. I will give you all their authority and glory. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus didn't flinch. He knew he would rule all those kingdoms. And to take the easy way, he knew it would lead to disaster. And again, he spoke God's words. It is written, worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. The devil narrowed his eyes and readied his last shot. He led Jesus to the city of Jerusalem. They stood upon the very highest point of the temple itself. The worshipers far below looked as small as beetles. The devil smirked. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. It is written, the Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. The devil's true question seemed to hang in the air. Does God really love you? Prove it. But once again, Jesus had God's own words at the ready. Scripture says, do not test the Lord your God. The devil seethed with rage. He couldn't trap Jesus. So he finally gave up and left until his next good chance. When the devil was gone, God sent angels to take care of Jesus and provide everything he needed. And because Jesus spent his entire life discovering what God said, when the time came, he was ready to make a wise choice. Huh. Let's find out where I went wrong, shall we? Hmm. Full screen. Rewind. There. And play. Very important. Not. That was my mistake. Tossing out the instructions. If I want to use a VCR, first, I have to learn how to use a VCR. Makes sense, doesn't it? No? How about this? When Jesus was in the desert, he was tempted by the devil to do things he shouldn't do. But Jesus was prepared. He used things he'd learned from what we now call the Old Testament to help stand against temptation. Most of us probably won't spend 40 days without food in the desert, but we will definitely be tempted to do things that we shouldn't do. You might be tempted to yell at your little sister. You might be tempted to watch YouTube when you're supposed to be doing your homework. You could be tempted to eat that whole pizza instead of saving some for your friends. So what do we do? How do we control ourselves when we're tempted to do what we shouldn't? If you wanna do the right thing, first, you have to learn the right thing. You need to be ready, prepared, and that means you need instructions. We can get instructions for life in all kinds of places. The Bible is an incredible place to look if you want to know how God wants you to live. And God has also placed people in your life that can help teach you the difference between right and wrong. It could be your parents, your teachers, your small group leaders. If we listen and learn, we'll be more prepared when temptation happens. So here's the one thing to remember today. Be ready to do the right thing. Learn now so you don't do something you regret later. I wish this thing could rewind real life. No, it's, it's just remote. I'll see you next time.